So, so you have both enrichment, like a sort of, a, I guess, like a, like townhouse, and you also have like sort of physical like enrichment, like the physical physical enrichment, which is running, which has a bigger effect on social dom sort the the running or like the environment enrichment with like a townhouse or things to do like. I guess it's like, is there, is there a difference between the physical enrichment and the sort of mental, for lack of a better word, enrichment? Or are they all the same in the end? So the difference between the two hasn't really been tested and we haven't looked at that. All we've looked at is just, so our cages would be considered more of an enriched environment because they are a little bigger and they have the running wheel. My <coughs> idea was that it may show something similar, but I think the running may be more important because we nailed down a mechanism that shows that because specifically moms run and not particularly the environment that they're in, that you see changes in the milk. So this is all mediated through milk and it seems like it's linked with the running. So at least in this case with the moms, we think that it's perhaps the running that's more important. Other questions? Many years ago, in the late 60s, early 70s, IBM and Yorkton Heights conducted similar experiment, experiments where in a room tightly packed with shelves, they threw a whole bunch of mice. A few days later, hierarchy was established, just the same thing. So the mice with the riding uh, fur were at the bottom, the mice with the glossy fur were at the top, the fighting was done. They then went on to a second experiment, which is interesting. They raised the noise level. What came out was quite startling. The males receded in the background and hit. The females took control. I mean, that's not surprising. I mean, you gotta fix everything, do everything. I mean, it's not surprising. So, but yeah, that's really interesting. I haven't read that study, so thank you. I didn't know that. Um, have you noticed any genetic differences uh, that determine social dominance? So that's what we're testing now. So, well, rather, because this change that we see here, pups are already born. So we're looking at epigenetic changes. So basically, any not at the nucleotide per se, but how, for example, methylation levels can lead to an individual to be predisposed to social dominance. So like how certain, so if you look at methylations, like how certain parts of the <coughs> genome are basically wrapped or unwrapped to then be translated into protein and such. So we're looking at the epigenetics level of it. But at the genetic level, I can't, besides what I mentioned previously, like being predisposed like a bigger body size, like in rodents, being predisposed bigger body size, testosterone levels, that shows that, but besides that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nope, nope, not on this one. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, let's give Catherine another round of applause.